Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to walk you guys through my recent experience at Herradura Tequila Express in Guadalajara, Mexico. I went there, it was the last weekend of 2019 and I believe it was the first day they hosted it on a Sunday. So we drove there from Michoacan. That took us like two and a half hours. We left our house like at eight or like 7.45 and once we were on our way, I booked our tickets online. I basically paid 4,400 pesos for two tickets. I used an international visa so that I wouldn't inquire any international fees. That is a total of $234. So after you book your tickets, that's when they tell you where you can meet for the train station. Um, I will list the address below. I believe if you just drive there, you can buy the tickets in person. But I tried searching all over the internet for that address because I didn't want to necessarily book online. I wanted to book from like an alternative website because uh, I was trying to see if I can get some points elsewhere. Um, but I just did it with them because they didn't provide that address. So I'll link that below. Okay, so at this point, we had already checked in at the front desk and picked up our bracelets. Um, I also made sure to go to the bathroom because it is a long train ride. Um, and the bathrooms were pretty well kept, which I think is a huge plus in public places. It says a lot about the place. You do have to go through a security point where they scan you with a machine and they look through your bag. And then you head up some stairs to the actual train station. There you have to find your train or your cart, I'm not sure what it's called, um, but we were on the green train which is actually the cheapest option they have because we did book last minute. That's the only one we were able to get uh, our hands on. It was called the premium car but they also have the club car and the first class car and as you can see here um, the premium car which is what we have is just like a standard bus type of a train um, the other ones the club car and the first class car are more of a lounge they have couches and they have an actual bar you can walk up to so it is a much different experience which I am kind of bummed out that we missed out on but it was still an overall good experience so the train does leave at 11 o'clock not one minute earlier and not one minute later um, and it is an hour and a half before you get to your next stop so as soon as you settle into your seat, they offer you coffee and orange juice. And then once the train takes off, they give you some bread. Um, so if you didn't have any breakfast, uh, they do have you covered. My brother and I had not had breakfast, so we were super worried that we were just going to start drinking and then end up all fucked up, but that didn't happen. Soon after the bread, they start bringing the drinks, so they provide mixed drinks and shots, and as they're serving them, they're explaining to you what type of herradura they used for the mixed drinks and with what. The same with the shots, they even teach you how to take a shot so that it doesn't burn or bother you so much. And um, they go into the history, and there's lots to look out the window, so it doesn't feel like an hour and a half long ride. Una vez en su boca tomen aire por la nariz. Alright, so at this point we have been traveling for an hour and a half and we've arrived at our first stop which is a town called Amatitan. So you do have to get off the train and there's uh, people selling you hats, lots of cute hats. So you do get a moment to stretch out. Um, but soon after that, you do have to jump on your bus and wait for everybody to board. And then you go on like about a five minute bus ride to the actual Herradura Hacienda.
Muy bien, entonces estábamos dando una introducción en la parte de atrás sobre la, sobre la gima. Les platicaba que la finalidad de este proceso o esta etapa es realizar el corte a las hojas con una herramienta llamada COA, que es la que tienen estos en sus manos, se llama COA, COA de gimar. Es una herramienta que pesa aproximadamente 5 kilos y de la parte inferior es muy filosa. Por eso observamos que él tiene una protección en la pierna izquierda porque constantemente están gimando y de alguna manera tiene que estar protegido en caso de algún movimiento o corte fallido. Con base en la palabra gima, tenemos a las personas que realizan esta acción que se llaman gimadores. A continuación nosotros vamos a ver una pequeña exhibición de cómo se realizan los cortes en el campo, que es en la parte de la gima. All right, so for those of you who have no idea what this guy just said in Spanish, he's basically going over the final steps of this face, the plant's growing face, and they're basically gonna cut off the leaves of the agave plant with the tool that the guy with the hat has in his hand. It is called a koa, and it weighs five kilos. Um, it's very sharp, so that's the reason you see that brown thing on his leg. It's a protective shield. And now they're going to show us how this quimador would normally cut off the leaves out in the field. Como ustedes pueden apreciar, el corte que se realiza va de abajo hacia arriba y solamente se deja un pequeño fragmento de las hojas del agave. ¿Por qué solo se deja ese pequeño, ese pequeño fragmento? ¿Por qué no es más grande? Porque las hojas contienen ceras que son amargas, las cuales, si se van en el siguiente proceso, alteran la calidad del producto. Es por eso que pueden apreciar, solo se deja un pequeño relieve o un pequeño fragmento de las hojas. Una vez que se gima, se va a partir por la mitad, como lo están viendo en este momento, y de la parte del centro tenemos que retirar un fragmento que se llama cogollo. Ahorita van a poder apreciar que allí hay una cera, una cera orgánica que parece como, como telaraña. Voy a ir pasando un poquito de cerca para que la puedan apreciar. Si lo alcanzan a ver. Esto que se ve como telarañita. So he goes on to explain that the reason they remove the leaves from the plant is because they contain a bitter wax that if they left on and they took to phase two of the process would alter the quality of the end product. Once the leaves have been removed from the plant, they cut the body in half and search for and remove a stem that holds a spiderweb looking thing like the one in the image here that is also bitter. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Esto, esto que ven aquí que parece como telaraña, entonces, como les comento, es una cera amarga. Esto que es la mayor concentración de ceras amargas es lo que se retira, porque si no, ¿qué pasa? Lo mismo que con las hojas. Si eso se nos va en el proceso, obviamente altera la calidad del producto, por eso se tiene que retirar. Todos, si se fijan, se parten por la mitad, los que están allá, por ejemplo, y se retira esa parte que es el cogollo. Como les había comentado, el nombre que reciben ya estas uh, bolas son piña o corazón de agave. Realmente esto es lo que nos interesa para el proceso de elaboración de tequila. Las hojitas como tal no tienen función para el proceso de elaboración de tequila, sin embargo se utilizan como composta o con orgánico, que si se dejan en el campo, tardan aproximadamente seis meses en desintegrarse. Estamos viendo aquí, por ejemplo, estos son los hijuelos, los que yo les comentaba que nacen alrededor de la planta madre. Normalmente un poquito más grande, es como el promedio de, de los hijuelos, la bola que deben de tener para que entonces sean plantados a otro lugar y que comience el tiempo de maduración que les platicaba. De los que vemos, por ejemplo, allá amontonados, estamos viendo que son diferentes tamaños. Por lo tanto, el tamaño no es un, pues no es un factor importante. Vamos a encontrar obviamente diferentes pesos por lo mismo del tamaño. Vamos a encontrar agaves que pesen 25 kilos y ya estén listos, hasta otros que pesen 250 kilos y ya estén listos. Es muy contrastante y muy variado el peso de los agaves. ¿Qué es importante saber entonces? 
el equivalente de kilos y de litros. Por cada 6 kilos que obtengamos en peso, será igual a un litro de tequila. Y por tanto depende cuánto pese nuestro agave para saber cuántos litros de tequila puedo sacar de una sola planta. Eso va a ser pues dependiendo del peso de la planta. Y ya por último quiero hablarles sobre los gimadores. Ellos son una pieza fundamental para este proceso de elaboración de tequila. Así como lo vimos ahorita en esta pequeña exhib exhibición, así se realiza en el campo. Pero se tiene que gimar un promedio de 150 diarios en una jornada de 6 a 8 horas. Y ahorita, pues relativamente está a gusto el clima, no hay mucho sol. Pero esta región es súper calurosa y el sol pega con ganas. Entonces es un trabajo muy arduo, pero pues es la base para todo esto que vamos a comenzar a conocer nosotros. Por lo cual me gustaría un fuerte aplauso, por favor. Para nosotros. Sí. He then talks about how the leaves that were cut off from the agave serve no purpose other than to compost around the plant when it is out in the field. Um, so only the only thing they do use is what they call the pineapple or the heart of the agave, which is the remainder parts that were left cut in half. Perfecto. Vamos entonces al siguiente proceso que son los hornos, por favor. Gracias. So these are the ovens where they cook the hearts of the agave. They are made out of clay or brick. Um, they let them cook there for about 26 hours and let them sit there for 24 hours to cool off. They end up looking like this. So at this point all the cooked agave gets pulled out of the oven and ran through a shredder which then extracts all the juice into these whole tanks shown here. Okay, so if you step back into time a few minutes ago to earlier in my video where I showed you those um, holes on the ground that the juice from the cooked agave gets spilled into, that juice then gets transferred to this location and put into those stainless steel tanks and is left to ferment. So for the tour's grand finale, they hit us with the fun fact. There is 156 distillers in Jalisco that produce tequila and Casa Herradura is the only one that still has theirs in their original location, which is what I'm showing you here even though it's no longer in use. Around 3 p.m. they took us to the dining area they had set up for us and they kept the drinks coming uh, the entire time we were eating. We did get a three course meal which included some crunchy tacos like the ones you see here as well as a meat and potato dish uh, like the one shown there and of course we got some pastries the entire time that we were eating uh, they had flocorico dances and uh, mariachi so it was pretty loud in there They did have a pop-up tequila shop where you could get discounted tequila and they offered free engraving, which was a nice gift to take back home. Uh, soon after that, we did jump back on the bus, which took us to the train. And on the train, they did keep the drinks coming. Um, the sun started to go down, so it was a nice ride back. At this point, you can tell there were some drunk people in the bus, but nobody was like chaotic or too much. Um, so it was an overall nice experience. By the time we made it back to the station, it was actually pretty dark and we did have to walk one block away to pick up the car, which sounded kind of scary, but luckily we weren't the only ones walking there and regardless, it was pretty safe. So at this point, we are driving to downtown Guadalajara to meet some of our family members who had just landed at the airport. It was football night, so we ended our night with uh, some dinner, drinks, and football.
okay leave a comment down below let me know if you have any questions i'll link everything down below the website i use the prices what it converted to in dollars and the address of the train station